this lecture, we will be discussing the annals approach to historiography. Um, why do I think this is important? I want you to view history differently than how most people view history. Typically, people view history as different points along a linear path. Uh, each point represents a day, an, an event, an hour, whatever. This causes a lot of problems because it turns our minds punctular. Uh, we no longer view people and events within their broader context. Uh, for example, we see the Philistines, but we don't think of their use of geography, metallurgy, water sources. All these things that have been there in the land for thousands of years are now suddenly taken for granted because we focus ourselves on, say, Goliath. What I'd like to do here is to move outward, uh, looking at the ancient Near East in terms of the long duration, and then slowly move back in until we reach these uh, individual points in time. To do this, let me introduce an idea of the Annals historiographic um, approach, the historiographical approach, excuse me. Um, I've, I've already given you some information about this concept uh, in the, the lesson overview. Um, but let me run back through this concept again. Um, Fernand Braudel, you may hear me refer to this as the Braudelian approach. Uh, this is because um, Fernand Bra Braudel was one of the most famous of the Annals school. He defined history in four tiers, uh, but we're actually only going to look at three of the tiers because the fourth one has it's something to do with economy. Um, the first is what he called Le Long Dury. Uh, it's French for the long duration. Um, as you can see in the chart that I had provided for you back in the uh, um, um, the uh, lesson overview, excuse me, um, the long duration can be understood in, in terms of large space and long periods. So you know, national type space, but long periods of time, centuries, maybe even millennia. In discussing le long dur dure concepts, I know I'm, I'm going to keep butchering the French, forgive me. In discussing long dure concepts, uh, we could discuss issues of geography, metallurgy, diet, you know, the foods that they ate. Basically things that don't change that often. Now, there's another tier, and this one deals with social or political issues uh, called conjuncture or conditions in French, or conjuncture in French, translated conditions. Uh, sometimes you may hear me refer to as moyenne durée, the average duration. Uh, here we can think of social statuses, slavery, religion, political unities, treaties. This is what we call social time. Uh, and so the, these, these social issues deal within the different communities. Um, it isn't until we reach what is listed in the chart that I've given you as events that we find the this this punctular history that we're often you know that we often think of in the annals school the term used is courte dure or short duration so yes we do work with punctular events in history but only in light of the broader events my hopes are that after this one short lecture you will gain a better understanding of how we do history now, I should point out that there is a completely separate course where we take this idea of uh, the Annals School in historiography and we, we expand uh, the entire ancient Near East. Um, this course is called um, uh, uh, Biblical Cultural Settings or Cultural Settings of the Ancient Near East. I can't remember how, how we have it labeled right now. But in this, we, we work through Long Dury, Moyen Dury, and Cortec Dury concepts. Uh, throughout the entire ancient Near East, and obviously how those apply to the biblical text. Uh, so talk to your advisor about cultural settings of the ancient Near East. Um, okay, very uh, quickly, um, sorry, very quickly now, uh, let's take a look at how these concepts play out. Speaking of long durée issues, we could start off looking at the land. Uh, the way the land of the ancient Near East situated uh, concerned travel, living conditions, uh, the making of pottery, and so forth. For example, there is a geological clay deposit called the Moses Formation running through the land of Canaan. 
Uh, and we believe that most pottery was formed from this clay. This meant that all throughout the history of the heartland, people and potters had to have access to these clay deposits. Not only did they uh, have to have access, but they had to purify and prepare the clay for process, uh, you know, for actually making the pottery. Um, so, uh, forgive me, I'm kind of losing my train of thought. Um, so, talking about the, this concept of pottery, actually there, there uh, are uh, people today who still follow these same ancient procedures. While I was in Jordan, I had the privilege of uh, visiting some of these potters and watching them work. Uh, I stood there watching them prepare the rugged clay, um, how much they had to go through to, to actually purify this stuff. Uh, and as I was watching, I was thinking about the importance of how uh, of this clay. You know, they don't just throw it out; they 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 purify it, they work it. If they mess up, they rework it because they had to go through a lot of stuff to make this work right. And then I was thinking about the Potter's house in Jeremiah, how you know the Potter didn't throw out the clay. Well, lesson learned is an important lesson. We are important to God, just be, just as that clay is important. Uh, to the potters. Well, what about metallurgy? Um, as you already know, we break up history into different groupings, stone, bronze, iron. Uh, these don't necessarily correspond to the exact times that these metals were used, but we can, uh, but we can think of the actual uh, metallurgy process as long dury issues uh, because the metals were used over a vast amount of time. Bronze was the metal choice uh, for a long period of time because it was strong. It was easy to manipulate. They had iron around, uh, but they didn't really mess with it that much because it was so hard to deal with. Some people played with it a little. We find iron jewelry, a few iron weapons, mainly meteorite iron, actually. Um, but to work iron, you had to make the fire so much hotter uh, than what you had to work with bronze. Uh, it isn't that they didn't like what the iron did. It was stronger. It was better. Uh, but how can you support a family when you are you know, wasting all of your resources on this novelty item called iron? Now, the change came because, you know, from bronze to iron because it, it had to be made. Around 1200 BC, there was a climatic event uh, in the north that displaced people groups. Um, famine, um, water started drying up, you know, plants not growing. Spread them, uh, and th this, 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 uh, Famine, the, this climatic event, began to spread these people, disperse them, and spread them all over the known world. Obviously, this, this disrupted trade. And the result is that the material needed for the bronze work just wasn't available like it was before. Um, so, we. What do you do? Well, you start working with that iron junk, that stuff that's hard to deal with. What else are you going to do? Um, well, what about food? What about family life? What about the birthing of children? Uh, all these ideas are long dury concepts that changed very little throughout the history. Um, while I was in Cyprus this past summer, I had the opportunity to listen to a lecture on a type of stone called picrolite. Uh, it, it was a, a certain type. Uh, actually, you know what? I've got. I'll show you some. Um, I went through and collected a lot of picrolite. Uh, while I was there in Cyprus. Uh, this was a uh, um, very special type of stone only found on the island of Cyprus. Uh, if you can see here, this is actually kind of a mixed one. It's got a little... Oh, I'm not going to be able to see that. Anyway. Let me turn this light off over here so you can get it better. It doesn't white it out. Um, kind of has a bluish tint to it. Here we go. Big one. Look at that. This is called picrolite. Uh, only found on the island of Cyprus. Uh, what they did was, uh, at a certain point in history, they would carve little figurines as good luck charms during the birthing process. Actually, I've got... Uh, this isn't made out of picrolite, but this is the figurine. This is a little cruciform figurine. And if you can look at that, if you can see... <coughs> excuse me. This gal is even wearing her own little cruciform figurine there around her neck. Uh, that, this is how this is how they, they, they wore these. Uh, over time, it, this was a good luck charm during the birthing process. 
um, <coughs> over time. Um, as they would wear it, it would actually, this stone will soak up your sweat, your oil, and it'll end up getting darker. See, this is really powdery, um, uh, very powdery. They would carve this into this cruciform shape. And uh, find a nice flat piece here. They would take this and they would carve it into this little cruciform shape, a lot smaller, smaller than this, wear it around their neck. And over time, the, uh, the stone would actually get darker uh, from, from being held onto. Oh, my feet. You can't really see the color there, can you? Uh, so as they're wearing this around their neck, it's sucking up their sweats, their oils, and it gets darker. Uh, and as it gets darker, obviously, uh, the charm must be working, right? Because the birth, birthing process was successful. So sometimes you'll find these things, they'll be extremely dark because they've gone through several generations of women giving birth. Now that's sort of a, uh, this, this cruciform piker light woman idea, is sort of a, a moyendry concept, average duration, because it's uh, dealing with birthing charms uh, in a certain point in time. But the idea itself of the, uh, the idea itself of uh, charms during the birthing process, that's a long dury issue, spending over thousands of years. It, people even do it today. Um, another long dury issue would be animal husbandry, shepherding, uh, and maybe the use of language, roads that were traveled. All these are long dury issues. Now, skipping ahead to the second tier, conjuncture, uh, or moyen dury, we talk of social time. Here, here we begin to look at concepts of tribalism. Um, what does it mean to live in a tribe? What, are, what do tribal leaders do? Uh, what about a chiefdom? Many biblical historians believe that uh, the kingship of Saul was not what we normally think of as kingship. Instead, Saul was more of like a chief, bringing different families, different tribes together and creating a chiefdom. As a matter of fact, kingship doesn't really come into play until Solomon's time. Uh, along with this idea of kingship, we find the idea, you know, this concept of city-states, nation-states, empires. All of these are moyen dure, dure, excuse me, issues that would help us discover not only what individual kings dealt with, uh, but even the general idea of Israel itself as a people. We know that Israel was not supposed to be a kingship. Uh, remember in Samuel, God, God should have been their king. Uh, studying and understanding this idea of kingship helps us to understand the biblical books of kings, which teaches us the moyen dure, dure issue, uh, lesson, uh, that kings are bad. God said they would be bad, and look what happened, they're bad. They should have trusted in God instead of men. Uh, another moyen uh, dure issue is that of imports and exports. What did the different peoples and the cultures bring into their lands, and what did they send out? For example, the Phoenicians, who were somewhat cut off by mountains and the sea, a long uh, dairy issue, by the way, uh, had very little land to farm, but they had lots and lots of trees on those mountains. So while they never really came together to form any kind of states, they did cut down trees and export them all over the Mediterranean. Besides trees, they took to the sea and would buy, sell, trade, bringing us goods from as far as India. Uh, they were so good at what they did uh, this whole sea voyage, saying that they were used as mercenaries uh, of the sea by armies later in history. Uh, these and other social interactions, like treaties and so forth, are issues of political time, social time, what we call conjuncture, or moyendiri. Uh, finally, we reach uh, individual time, uh, but I don't really need to say a whole lot about individual time. This is that uh, uh, kind of history that we normally understand as history. Individual time, quartet diri is best understood in light of long dury and moyen dury, uh, 